Today's paint is phthalo blue. What's up friends, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in episode 8 of The Paint Show. And today we're looking at this teeny tiny tube of Thalo Blue. It's a 5 milliliter tube by Daniel Smith. It came with my Daniel Smith Essentials. I love this set. It's really popular on my palette. Um, I just have been losing sleep at night, honestly, friends, because uh, in the last video uh, I sort of bashed on cools uh, on Thalos and uh, this one I actually, I just felt like I had to review it as well because I do use it occasionally. Um, I still have most of the tube here if you can see. Uh, you can probably tell by its uh, width. Um, I still have a lot of it. It's one of those that I use less. I use much more of the Pyro Scarlet, the New Gamboge, the French Ultramarine which are all present here on my tube, uh, on my palette, sorry. Um, but I do use this one as well. Okay, now it's a very interesting, a very good pigment, just generally speaking. Uh, it's very, um, it was developed in the 30s and it's just, it, it's very popular because it has a lot of qualities that are great and especially for watercolor, such as uh, it's very tinting, it's transparent, it's non-granulating, uh, it has excellent light fastness, we'll touch upon these things um, in a few moments, but just a very uh, popular paint and specifically for uh, watercolor. So let's look at some nerd stats, some additional information about this tube. Uh, the pigment is PB15. Uh, the color code, uh, I will put it on the screen, it's uh, 74160 based on Thalo cyanine dye. It's very pure uh, Thalo. And uh, if we look at the tube again, we have here um, just the, the information on the side. Uh, let it focus, yes. So you can see it's a, a, a series one, um, relatively common and uh, easy to make. Uh, it's, uh, it has excellent light fastness, as I mentioned, which uh, makes it so popular, specifically because of that. Um, it is non-granulating, which is a huge plus, as I'll tell you in a moment, like for what I like to use it. So if you want to get a smooth surface, it's just really good for that. Um, Daniel Smith's website actually recommends to use it as a reflection of sky on glass windows. So if you're doing a cityscape, and you have the, those strong blue, beautiful blue um, buildings on skyscrapers and uh, windows on skyscrapers. So this is a really good one for that. Um, it's uh, really transparent, which is always awesome for watercolor uh, paint. And also, uh, it's highly staining, as I, I think, I don't know if I mentioned, yeah, it has a really strong tint and uh, you can see now, obviously, because my palette is full of paint, but this entire area is really uh, touched by the phthalo blue. It has like a, a permanent sheen on it, uh, as, as opposed to this one, which is, I just divide it to uh, cooler and warmer. This is kind of the division. I always end up mixing the two a bit. Uh, but this upper part has a lot of the phthalo blue in it and I didn't use it that frequently but still uh, it has it so it's pretty funny to uh, to see. Uh, let's talk a bit about what I like to use this one for. Um, so as I said uh, I'm not such a big fan of cools but this one in particular because it came in my essential set and I really like uh, I really liked the idea of having a cool and warm uh, version of each primary. I did use it quite frequently uh, usually for seascapes, uh, not really that much for other uses and occasionally for sky if I want to get uh, a really strong, maybe a little cooler sky. Um, I will say it's wonderful if you do want to keep the granulation out of uh, the, the area you're painting. Um, because if you do, uh, let's say, a surface of water with French ultramarine, you're going to get sometimes really strong and aggressive granulations. Uh, if you And you may not want it. Uh, also for shadows, so uh, because I use French Ultramarine so much as opposed to this one, I do get a lot of aggressive granulations in my shadows. Uh, I kind of like that effect, but from time to time I wish to avoid it. This is when I will recommend using more of the, this one, the Thalo Blue. Um, I also think just as a cool thing that I do use from time to time, so if you take it with sepia, because they're both really strong, you can get those super dark darks. Um, and also, uh, as an added bonus, you can get a nice play of warms and cools if you just uh, change the, the ratio between the two. So this is just a really cool thing if you want to make your shadows uh, more interesting. So that's basically it for what I use it uh, for. 
I do try to make more use of it because it's just very popular for a reason. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to love more the cooler uh, cooler uh, colors, cooler pigments. Uh, so anyway, this is it for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm trying to make the episodes more frequent. Uh, it's just a lot of work together with all the rest of the videos I produce. Uh, but I do hope the frequency is good now, uh, once every four or five days, I guess. Uh, and I want to thank you for your support on this series. Uh, let me know if you like it and if you want me to continue it, just uh, hit that um, like button because it's really important for me to judge whether I want to continue it or not. Uh, if I see that it just doesn't gain that much popularity and people prefer other things, I can just eliminate it and maybe we can try to have another series. Uh, you know, I'm open for uh, suggestions and ideas. So just basically let me know uh, what you think of it. I will see you again in another episode and in another video tomorrow. <laughs>